Our Father and our God, we thank you for the blessing of today. We ask you, Lord, as we're about to receive your word, open our hearts, open our minds, and fill us with the Holy Spirit so everything we have from you shall be a testimony of what we are about to give unto. Thank you, Father Lord, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Wow. It's a blessing to be in your presence. And I just want to thank God for today. I want to thank God for giving me the opportunity. Also, I want to thank God for giving this man of God, the canon, the venerable and the pastor, for giving them the wisdom to let me stay in front of you and talk. Hallelujah. I want to thank them. I also want to thank uh, Canon for kicking me out of preaching last week. Did you guys see that crowd last week? I was worried. <laughs> you know, I was worried. Really, really worried. It was, it was a funny situation. So when he called me and he told me, he said, hey, Chidi, don't, uh, you know, don't worry, I'm going to preach. I said, okay, no problem. You know, it was a blessing, but I was really, really going through it. <laughs> Hallelujah. just a blessing, you know, to know about this thing. And because of this, we're just going to go through what we read about in the gospel today. And the gospel was according to Matthew 6, 26, I mean, Matthew 6, uh, from 25 to 34. You know, the most repeated word in this scripture is, don't be afraid. If you read the Bible, I found out that the most repeated word in the Bible is, don't be afraid. It was said about multiple times, multiple times, don't be afraid. So here's the thing. God said it in somewhere. He said it in Judges 6, verse 23. And he said there, he was telling, when he was telling Gideon to when he was calling Gideon to lead the Israelites, he said it there. He said, then the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not, what, die. He also said it to Jeremiah when he was calling him to be a prophet of the nations. And that was in Jeremiah 1, verses 8. And he says, do not be afraid of their faces, which is what I'm doing now. I'm not afraid of your faces. I'm just, you know, do not be afraid of your faces. For I am with you, I am with you to do what? Deliver you, says who? 
the Lord. A lot of places that God said that. He also said it, Jesus Christ also said it to the woman during the resurrection. Do not be anxious. And he also says in Philippians um, 4 verse 6, do not be anxious for everything. There's something that I've noticed in this life. We always want to do something. We're always worried. I had a story about the man that a thief came to him and he said, your money or your life. And the man was thinking about it. He put his hand on his head. He was thinking. And the thief kept on saying, your money or your life. And the man told him, hold on. I'm trying to figure out which one I can go out with, you know. And that's the thing. We keep worrying about things, you know. And there's something also in the Bible that happened to Adam. Adam, after the sin, you all know the sin, right? Adam was relaxing, nothing happened. Then the woman came, gave Adam apple, and Adam sinned. And immediately that happened. What did Adam say? I was afraid. That's the first thing that Adam said. And that's the first time that fear came into the vocabulary in the Bible. Amen. That is the first time that fear came into the Bible. After, before, before sin, it was woman, then sin, then I was afraid. Hallelujah. So people are looking at me that, what am I saying? <laughs> but after that one, you know, we started living in fear. Fear of failure, fear of success. Even, yes, there are some people that are fear of succeeding. Amen? They are fear of succeeding. And there's also the fear of death. And now fear has become a normal in our lives. Hallelujah. Fear is a normal thing. I mean, you wake up and you're afraid. Oh, how is it going to, how is it going to happen? How is today going to be? And everything like that. But John says in, John, in 1 John 4 verse 18, he says something. Perfect love drives out fear. Hallelujah. Perfect love drives out fear. And what love is most perfect than the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our lives? Amen. People's relationship is fractured because of sin. Our relationship with God is fractured because of sin. Therefore, people are, because of that sin, we've removed that love that God has emotionally given to us from the beginning, and it has brought out fear in us. So it's because of that we are un unable to get that love from God because of uh, sin, and we also cannot receive love, you know, and in this passage that we read, Jesus commands his disciples not to worry about their needs. What are their needs? They have to eat, drink, or wear. But you know, if you go back in the beginning of the um, chapter, like I think it's like between 19 to 24, that's where Jesus Christ was telling his disciples to store up treasures, you know? But what kind of treasures was he telling them to store up? Heavenly treasures. Because there are a lot of things that we like to store up in heaven here, I mean on earth. A lot of us like to store up a lot of things. Like if you ask somebody now, well, how many cars do you have? Oh, I have three cars. Oh, how many cars do you have? I have, I have two houses, you know? We are happy, you know? But those are the believers because they want to keep getting more and more and more. And you ask yourself, how much money do you need in this world to say you're okay? How much wealth, how much cars do you need? It's so funny, you know, if you buy the best cars and you're working, if you work like a nine-to-five job, you take your best car and you park it in the parking lot, right? And you go inside your job. Where's that car? That car is outside. Nobody see you in that car, right? Then when you come out, you're in traffic, where you're calling your friends and everybody. When you're calling your friends, they are not seeing you in the car. So sometimes... Those earthly things that we do, we're just doing it to please other people. Oh, I have a best car. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't get a good car. Don't get me wrong. That's, and that's what we're going to look into now. I'm not saying that we shouldn't get that. But God is telling us, don't let it affect your relationship to him. Don't let it affect how you're going to live your eternal life. Because we're all here for a certain amount of time, right? We all believe as Christians, we're all here for a certain amount of time. So because of people are trying to get those things, they worry. They worry 
every minute of the day. They worry. And but some people say that worry is there are different forms of worry. There's worry and there's concern, right? There's worry and there's concern. Worry is something that you're anxious. And with anxious, with anxiousness comes what? Anxiety. That is one of the things that we have in America. Every little body, anybody that says, oh, I have anxiety, I have anxiety attack and everything, because they worry about what is going to happen later on. So those are the things that, but there's a difference between concern. Concerns help us to be diligent and diligent in everything we do. But what we're going to do today, we're going to walk through this uh, passage that we read, and we're going to see how sin how worry is a sin. And there are different ways that we could look at it. Worry is a sin because, number one, it denies us the wisdom of God. It denies us the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Worry is a sin because it denies us the wisdom of God. Now, we were made in God's image. Amen? But God says that if you are worried about what is going to happen to you tomorrow, that means you are worried, you are staying God does not know what he's doing. Hallelujah. That means you're not you're telling yourself, okay, I can do this. God, you said this, but let me do this on your behalf. That is one thing that I think that worry is a sin. Worry denies us the wisdom of God. He says it tells us that God doesn't know what he's doing. And worry also denies us the love of God. It denies us the love of God. You say your God is your father. Amen? But you are worried about everything. You're worried you're not going to have your next meal. You're not worried. So that means you're, you're telling yourself that God doesn't love you. Hallelujah. You're telling yourself that God doesn't love you. So that is a sin also. If you're worried about things, it denies you that the love of God. And worry is a sin because it denies you the power of God. It denies you the power of God. It's telling us that he do, you don't believe that God can deliver you from whatever thing you are doing. Hallelujah. So if you are denying yourself, if you are telling yourself, if you are worried about anything, you are worried that, oh, I'm not going to get a good grade. You're worried. You are denying yourself the power of God. You are limiting God's power. Because it's just like if you ask yourself, I can't do this. I can't do this. But you're not telling God, God, do this for me. So you are denying the fact that God's power is infinite. Anytime you worry and every time you let that worry affect your relationship with God, you're denying the power. So we're going to look at different ways to make, to see how we can overcome worry. Hallelujah. We can overcome worry in different ways. We're going to look at it. The first one I can say is like, we need to focus on the permanent matters instead of the temporary ones. We need to focus on the permanent matters instead of the temporary ones. Let's read uh, Matthew 5, I mean Matthew 6, verse 25. If we read Matthew 6, verse 25, it says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is, life more, is, is not life more than food and the body more than what? Clothing. This thing here, if you look at it, it says, therefore. And that therefore, that one is pointing back to that beginning of the thing when he was telling us that he should tell his disciples to gather up a lot of things. And he, des he describes two things. He describes spiritual wealth and also earthly wealth. You know, things in this world are bountiful. Hallelujah. Things in this world are bountiful. But he's telling us that instead of focusing on temporary matters like basic needs and everything, there's more to life than eating. There's more to life than clothing. There's more to life than cars. There's more to life than wealth. And he's saying that those things will come and pass. But if you focus on his own internal things, those things that would never come to pass, which is what, as Christians, everything wants to go about it. You know, things change. I mean, when you, there was a time they told us meat was the best thing. Now they say don't eat red meat, right? There was a time they said milk was good for our children. Now they say give them almond milk. Now I'm hearing that almond milk is no longer good, right? So there is a time that they would, you know, they, I think the worst one is iPhone, and I have an iPhone. Every year it comes up with a new one. Then they'll tell you what? 
something changed about it. All cars, if you have a car, I told them that I won't change my car until I see that it can fly because it doesn't make sense. Because cars are beautiful, but they keep changing it. And that's how society has decided that they would make us fall into this trap of we have to be better every time, every time. And when you do that, you just fall into that trap. And because of that, you want to be the next thing. And it, the funny thing is that it, it entangles us to all the things that we do not need. Hallelujah. It entangles us to all the things we do not need. And what Jesus is saying here, he's not telling us not to go out to get these things, but he's saying don't let it be the focus of your life. Hallelujah. Don't let it be the focus of it. Because the more you want to get this thing, and you know the funny thing is the prices keep coming up, going up, and you want to work more. You want to, so you're limiting yourself from getting closer to God. And that's what Jesus is saying. The more you look at it, or is it Bitcoin? Let's think about Bitcoin now. If you put all your uh, stuff in Bitcoin, how many of you do Bitcoin? You see, if you, BMK, they are not here. We see, but if you do Bitcoin or PGI, if you do PGI, all those things, if you do all those things, you will find out that after a while, it goes down. Amen? After a while, it goes down. So you ask yourself, what is this? But those are the things that people tell you, oh, it's the best thing. There was a time Bitcoin was raining. Everybody was like, oh, let's do Bitcoin. I won't lie, me too. I did it too. I did Bitcoin. I, I did it, but you know, it didn't work. You know, so what about, I mean, what will I do? You know, some people say we recover. <laughs> so, but that's the thing though. Those are the things that I know there was a man that killed himself because it didn't work, right? He killed himself, he lost a lot of money and it didn't work and that happened. But what do you do in that kind of thing? But God is saying, instead of putting your whole thing, your whole mind, in those things. Why don't you put your whole mind in serving him, in showing him that he can take care of you? Because the only reason why we do all those things is because to better ourselves, right? We are doing it to better ourselves. But while we are doing too much of it, we are letting God on the, we're telling God that, God, I know you can do it, but I don't think you can do it too much for me. Again, God is not saying, if you read it, Jesus is not saying, and we'll go back to that one also, is not saying that he doesn't want us to get this wealth. He's just saying how you get it and what you use to get it and when you get it is the problem. If you look at uh, Colossians 3, 1 to 4, it says, since then you have raised, you have been raised with Christ, your hearts, on your, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Set your minds on things above, not earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is in you, appears to you, then you also appear in, with him in what? In glory. That is what he's saying. Often, we conquer passion by focusing on greater passion. To focus on earthly matters like riches and everything, it brings anxiety. That's the honest thing. If you keep focusing on earthly things, you would always be anxious. Oh, I need to get this. I need to get that. And those are the things that make us have problems. So what God is saying in verse 26 is focus on eternal matters and it will deliver us from the worries and bring us God's peace. Amen. Also, another thing I want us to look at on this chapter is we need to focus on God's divine care. We need to focus on God's divine care. And here, God gave us an example. Jesus Christ gave us an example on here that the birds in the sky, the birds in the sky, how he feeds them, the flowers, how he made them grow and look better. Even the flowers were, no matter how the wealth and the beauty of Solomon, which was the, the richest man to have ever lived, uh, Jesus Christ said that, the beauty of those flowers on the grass, uh, on the fields, they are so much more worth in value than that of Solomon. Hallelujah. But these are natural possessions, you know? And I always tell people that God is, you know, uh, people that love watches. If you make a watch, 
once you make a watch, it's done. The person just looks at it and it's gone. All those watchmakers, they don't come back to come and look at it and tell you, is it done and everything like that. But, Jesus, uh, but God is different. God is actually involved in our daily life. God has made us, so he's involved in our daily life. And that's the difference with it. Now, the, some people would say, as God is saying, okay, if you guys, if, if um, God is taking care of the, the birds, is indirectly telling us not to work. That is a lie. God is not saying don't work. Because if you look at it, it says, look at the birds in the sky, how he feeds them. What do they do? They don't just stay in their nest. But first of all, how do they build their nest? They build their nest, right? So they go out, they get the build, they get the building materials, and they build their nest. Then they also go out to look for food. Now we don't know how they find their food. They fly at the fly. So those are the things. Sometimes we misinterpret what the Bible is saying. What I'm saying is like some people will read this and say, "Oh, God said, let me not work." God said, "Let me not." No, God wants you to work. Because if you don't walk, you will not eat. Hallelujah. And it says that, uh, Paul said that in 2 Thessalonians 3. I mean, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. It says that, he says, a person that does not walk shouldn't eat. A person that does not walk shouldn't eat. You know, God is just telling us in this part of this place is that I know I want you guys to do this, but I want you to trust me when you go out to look for something. Trust me when you go out to say, okay, I'm going out, I, I need a job, I'm going out. Don't just put it on yourself. So that's what God is saying. We have to focus on God's divine care. We have to focus on God's divine and we have to understand that God's sovereign love is all around us. There's no need to worry. It doesn't help. There's no need to worry. Worry doesn't help. If you're in school, you're worrying, oh man, I need to do this for my next GPA. You know, it doesn't help for you to worry. What do you need to do? Study, you know, study about it. There's no need to worry about your bills for the next day because the bill is still going to be there. What do you need to do? Walk towards that to get that thing. So there are different ways that we have. There's no need to worry, you know. It, it's, just, it's just the more you worry, the more you worry, the more the anxious you get and the more stress comes your way. And Jesus says it here in this passage. He says, there's no time that you worry that you will add an extra day or an extra minute in your life. So why worry? Why worry? There is no need to worry. Don't do that. Just try to change your situation. And when you do that, the best way to do it is to take it to God. Hallelujah. Take it to God. Drop it at his feet. And just do, God, handle this situation for me. And if you tell him that, you step aside and see him walk. And that's the problem that we always do. We always don't want to step aside. We always want to say, God, I want you to do this for me. Can I help you? How are you going to help God? Just give it to him. Believe in it in him. And it will do good for us in Jesus' name. Another thing we have to do is like we need to recognize our great value to God. Hallelujah. We need to recognize our great value to God. When Jesus was talking to the he didn't tell us. He didn't say the bird's father. Hallelujah. He didn't say the bird's father. What did Jesus say? Your father feeds them. Hallelujah. Your father feeds them. Animals are not made in God's image. Who are made in God's image? We are. If we are made in God's image, what do you think we are to God? We are of great value to God. Animals are not, are not anything in our own image. They are not the sons and daughters of God. But a funny thing, they are not co-heirs to Christ. As it is said in Romans 8 verse 17, we might not read that, but they might put it up. Romans 8 17 just shows us that we are co-heirs with Christ in God's creation. And God himself made us the chief in his creation. We are more valuable than the birds. We are more valuable than the grass. We are more valuable than this. So that's the thing that we mistaken ourselves. We don't know how much value God puts in our lives. For us to always think that we are not worthy to become kings. We always worry. And the times, the, when we worry, we lack. And you know, the funny thing is that like we lack something. And what we lack is we lack we, our wants, but not our needs. Hallelujah. 
We always lack our wants, but not our needs. What are our wants? I want this. I want that. But what do you need? We need air to breathe. We need, we need good health. We need this. So those are the difference, and those are the things that we always do. We don't, we always have those things confused. We need to trust God to take care of our needs. We want to take care of our own needs, and the problem is that we do not want to give God the credit. Oh, when I got this, I always remember when, you, um, when you're in school, when you have an exam, when they say, what did you get? You say, I made an A, right? But when you fail, you say, what happened? The teacher gave me an F. You know, the teacher will always give you. So that's the thing with life. We always want to take credit. We never want to give God the credit. We always want to take credit of things, you know. And when we try to take credit on our own selves, it just reveals the lack of faith we have in God and the lack of trust that we spend time worrying about things, you know. And when we spend time worrying about things, it just affects our trust and faith in God. We don't know the value of our life in God's hands. Let me give you an example. My, uh, my parents, I know most of us have like first generation uh, Americans. My mom and dad, I never had my father tell my mom, I love you, right? I never had my father at all. When my mom started staying with us, you know, my kids would tell her, I love you. My mom would say, okay, you know, it took her a while. It took her a while for her to start, but later on she started saying, I love you, you know, every time. Then I told her, I said, ah, mom, you've changed. Yeah, you, you started saying, I love you. My dad never told you I loved you. She was like, well, that's the thing. I said, but what changed? She's like, my father never told, she said, your dad never told me uh, he loved me, but I knew he loved me. She said, then I asked her, how do you know he loved you? I mean, after all, you know, he was a prince. You just saw him, you find God, you just, she said, well, the only way I knew he loved me was he gave me the best clothes when they were, when yeah, he bought the best car, he would give her the best car, he would be driving in the, you know, the worst car. When he changed his car, he bought. So he, she felt that all he did was to please her. All he did in his life, while he was alive, was to please her. So even though he never said that, you know, she knew that, he was, that she was true value to him. What am I saying? We are so much value. We are so much value towards God. We are so much value that there are some times that even though God can't tell us how much he loves us, he can't tell us how, he's going to show us if we only allow him to show us how he loves us. And how will he do that? If we put everything in his hands, if we are going through stuff that we cannot handle, we can just leave it to God and say, God, please take control of this situation and you'll see it work. You know, that is the thing that does doing. God, God gave us his only son. Hallelujah. God gave us his I mean, what best way for God to show us that he loves us by just giving us his only son? I mean, if he, if he didn't give us his own, if he, that's, that's the best example of showing how much he loved us. He gave us his only son. And we have supreme value in God's life. So if God is taking care of the birds and everything, he's definitely going to take care of us if only we have faith and trust in him. Hallelujah. The next one, quickly, is going to be focus on God's grace for today. Focus on God's grace for today. If you read verse 34, if you read verse 34 of what we read, it says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble <laughs> of its own. You know, what is this saying? It says, like, no matter what you're doing, if you're worrying about tomorrow's trouble, you're just adding tomorrow's trouble to today's trouble. Amen. So instead of worrying about one problem, you're worrying about two problems. So those two problems are going to kill you if you don't let it go. So why don't you worry about today's problem? Take care of today's problem and go. And the mistake some people make, you know, as Christians, we... People have this notation that once you become a Christian, every problem is gone. And that's a lie, right? That is that. Anybody that, anybody that tells you to repent and, you know, your, your problems are going, that person is lying to you. That's a lie. Christians uh, go through a lot of problems. You know why? Because the devil knows what God is capable of doing in your life. 
So the devil is trying to distort all those blessings that are going to come your way. So it's up to you to just leave all those things and just focus on God and it will make you good. But you know, in John, in John um, 16, verse 33, it says, Take courage, for I have done what? I have conquered the world. Because of God's, because of man's sin, you know, God just, uh, God's creation, you know, was cursed. Because of man's sin, God's creation was cursed. And that curse from the beginning is going to affect everything we do. Amen. Look at it. When, because of uh, the sin that happened, women now have to bear uh, pain when they are giving birth, right? Nine months. We don't know how it would have been if there was no sin. And because of the sin, because of the sin, God cursed the land that was going to be there, said, cursed is the land, because on the land you're going to suffer to bring food out. Hallelujah. So because of those curses, God has cursed it. But like David did in the Bible, whereby even though something bad, God cursed him, God still blessed him. After that, he was still out. So what I'm saying is that no matter how the curses that God has given on the land, God is still going to take care of you. He's still going to take care of you no matter what those curses are because God cannot take back what he has said. But he's still going to provide the grace that will make you see through those situations. God still, even after he cursed uh, the land and uh, Adam and Eve, what did he do? He looked for leaves and he sold clothes for them to cover up their nakedness, right? So after he had done that, he still took care of their problem, which was their nakedness in that day. And it says that no matter what we do, you know, there will always be trouble. Some days might be more trouble than the others, but don't let those troubles affect you. And let us go to Lamentations 20, um, Lamentations 3, 22 to 33. Lamentations 3, 22 to 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not what? Consumed, because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning and new every day. And I think there's a song like that, right? Great is thy faithfulness towards us. So no matter what happens, we are not consumed by these things. Everything is going to do. You know, one thing I always like to tell people that... God will provide grace for today, not for tomorrow, not for next week, not for next year, but just for today. And he would want us to know that we, and the reason why God does that, he wants us to, de to be dependent on him for today. He wants us to be dependent from him for today instead of independent. Because think about it, if God tells you, I will give you grace for one week, nobody will go to him, Right? If God says, okay, you know what, I'm going to give you grace for the whole of next week, like some people will do, they will go and plan their sin. And when they plan their sin, when they sin, they will go back to God and say, okay, God, please forgive me and everything like that. So those are the things. If he provides grace for those things, we will not do that. All we need to do is just where we need to go to God on a daily basis and ask him to give us this, and he will take away the burden from our lives. So in conclusion, what do we do? How do we overcome our worries? Overcoming worries in life, it just takes trusting God and knowing that God will take care of you. You know, live today like it's a blessing. Take advantage of the fact that God is showing you that he can do right for you today. You know, God is faithful. You know, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is not here. Tomorrow will take care of itself, you know. Sometimes we... we we forget to appreciate what we have around us because we think we have them, you know, we have those things, you know. It, it's, 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 it's a sad thing when you don't tell the person that you care about, you care about them, and they leave, and you regret. And those, that's one of the worst things we always have to do in our lives. So always appreciate what you have today. What we have today is we are breathing, we are walking, we are doing things, and we need to appreciate those ones. If you have a difficult boss that you can't stand at work, don't let him affect your job. Go to work, do the best you can, and do that, you know? If you have a difficulty, uh, if you have a difficult life, you think your life is difficult, don't let it worry you. Do something about it. And just know that tomorrow we take care of itself. My prayer is that just understand that God's mercies is new every day. Hallelujah. 
God's mercy is new every day. Don't try to carry your problems to tomorrow because the mercy is for tomorrow is different from today. Keep your problems for the same day. And that's why we have to always wake up and pray to God and say, God, thank you for today. Thank you for the fact that I'm here. Thank you for the fact that I'm able to worship you. And our prayer is that as we continue to worship God in everything, we shall overcome worry and focus on God's divine favor in our life because we are divine children in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for the blessing of today. We want to thank you for the love that you've given us. Our Father, we want to ask you that we should give us the wisdom so we should not worry of anything. But in everything we do, we should give you praise. In everything, we should give you thanks because you've taken care of everything. We are sure that everything that we have is from you, and we do not take it for granted. Guide us in everything we do. Protect us and help us to understand that our worries are nothing if we have you. Give us the faith to always come into your presence with all our problems, but also give us the strength and the wisdom to leave your presence anew, knowing that you have taken care of everything. We will ask you, Lord, to bless us abundantly and fill us with the Holy Spirit so that one day we shall be able to meet with you and thank you for your blessings in our life. In Jesus' name we pray.